And Councillor Kim McClary. Good evening. I am Jennifer Marshall Neely, your counselor, councilwoman here in Bloomfield. And oftentimes we, we forget that someone's doing something just out of the goodness of their heart. And when I see someone in our town who has reached out to do something for someone else and, and never ask for anything in return, I find it commendable that we acknowledge that person. So tonight, Councillor Ken McClary and I would like to present this citation. There are two citations, and the recipient will be is uh, Sheree McDowell. <laughs> I'm going to, to speak as she walks over. Town of Bloomfield, Connecticut, official citation to Citizens Against Drugs, Move Crew, presented to Sheree McDowell, who selflessly works extremely hard every Tuesday morning since 2008, driving her own vehicle 25 miles from Bloomfield to Cromwell to help bring bread to locations such as Federation Homes, Christ Church of Deliverance, St. John's Church, Youth Challenge, CRT, the Senior Center in Bloomfield, as well as homes of senior citizens who are unable to leave their homes. And I'm going to digress for one second because I have, I have witnessed some of the seniors who would approach her and say, I'm so glad you're here because this is the only time I get to have food and I save this bread and eat the bread until next Tuesday when you come back. We recognize that you realize the need within the community and selflessly gave of your own fruition to help others. I'd like to know that we want you to keep up the great work and know that the entire community of Bloomfield residents and parents applaud your tireless efforts. Dated at Bloomfield, Connecticut, this eighth day of April, 2019. Suzette Debetham Brown, Mayor, Deputy Mayor Rickford Curtin, Councilor Jennifer Marshall Neely, Councillor Kenneth McClary, Councillor Kevin Goff, Councillor Elizabeth Waterhouse, Councillor David, David Mann, Councillor Joseph Merritt, and Councillor Patrick DiLorenzo. <laughs> this is also a citation for Sheree from the General Assembly. This is an official citation introduced by Representative Matthew Ritter, 1st District, Representative Bobby Gibson, 15th District, Senator Douglas McCory, 2nd District, and Senator Derek Slap, 5th District. Be it hereby known that to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to Sheree McDowell in recognition of your advocacy and service to and for the citizens of Bloomfield and the state. Through your 11 years of dedication, your dedicated service to Citizens Against Drugs Move Crew, your contribution to the community has been invaluable. You have enhanced the quality of life for thousands by providing food and care. Your generosity, compassion, and thoughtfulness are noble, are noble to all. 
and we thank you for setting this example while serving the citizens of the state of Connecticut. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success. Sheree McDowell. so much guys oh, I don't know actually I guess I should not have picked up the uh, agenda for tonight because I would have truly been surprised and that maybe if India didn't have her back turned she probably would have stopped me <laughs> and I sit down and I'm like that's my name so I think thank you guys thank you so much We do. Please remind me you have three minutes. Okay, it's Angelique Crossdell Mills. Angelique Crossdell Mills, 18 Greenbrier Drive, Bloomfield, Connecticut. I wanted to thank the council for listening to us as parents over the last, say, two years that you guys have been on board. You have been supportive and while we know that this year is going to be a tough year for our students, since we are quite aware that no matter what you do as a council, it won't benefit the children, based on the fact that the board has continuously stated that they need uh, money to fill the shortfall for their insurance line item. And we've asked for a significant amount of increases. We didn't ask. The principals actually put forward their ask, and we just supported it wholeheartedly. Um, I still want to thank you because I know that you have done a lot of work. Um, unfortunately, our, our kids will still be short. Short. Um, whatever you do, whatever the board does, it will never benefit our kids. I ask that council continue to do their own research and don't just take the words of the board that the school system is doing great because you all can read. Um, CTEDS.gov is available. It carries all of our scores year after year, and you can dissect it yourself and figure out how well your district is doing. I've always encouraged my friends um, and family who are looking for a home to move to Bloomfield. And most recently, one of my friends will be purchasing a house in Bloomfield. But when she asked about the school system, I had to be honest, because I do have a son that lives in the system and is in the system right now. He's 16 years old. And we failed them tremendously. I have a niece and a nephew, and my sister had to pay for non-credit classes for him in a community college. So I know that we could do better. We have less than 2,500 kids in our system. There is no way that we pay over $20,000 per student that we cannot afford our kids better. I implore you to continue to really hold the board accountable for mismanaging the resources that you have given them over the last couple, 11 years or so. Go back, we asked for a forensic audit a couple years ago. We have not received a forensic audit today. I'm sure if you had done it, maybe we would not have been in this position today, but we are here. So since we are here and re-election is coming up, I am telling you, I'm asking you, I'm telling you <laughs> that I will campaign against anyone in this council that don't think about our kids first. Because at the end of the day, we're all gonna get old, we're all gonna become seniors, and those kids are gonna be expected to pick up the pieces after we leave. Thank you. Angeline Crosstail. Good evening, my name is Angeline Crossdale and I reside at 6 Andrea Lane, Bloomfield, Connecticut. Um, I kind of gave a little speech on this a couple months ago, I'm going to just repeat some of it. Marion Elderman has spent her entire lifetime as an activist for children's rights and she reminds us as a nation that if we don't stand up for children, then we, don't, we do not stand up for anything. 
the future which we hold and trust for our own children, we should shape by fairness for other children. As leaders for and, ed uh, for and with education, children will never get these uh, moments back. You have to remember, as educational leaders, your actions has consequences. After all, education is for all, improving the lives of others, and for leaving, leaving your community and the world better than you found it. Tonight, I'm urging you to do the right thing as leaders for our town to make the right decisions for our children, your children, and our grandchildren. Don't be heartless. For some of us, education is the only variable to bring equality of, op of opportunity to the world. It is beyond our powers, your power, to create a world in which all children have the right access to a good education. Those who do not believe this has small imaginations. Thank you. Tamina Fowler. Good evening. Um, I just want to say that, oh, Tamina Fowler, 1067 Blue Hills Avenue, Bloomfield. Um, I want to say that we are not providing the most important things that our children are in need of, and that's educational resources. We are not providing them with an equitable education. It's not fair to them. It's not right. We pay taxes for them to have an equitable education. We're not providing that. And it's evident when you go to the state's website, edsite, Dot gov and you see our test results where more than half of our kids are not performing on grade level and that's not okay with me as a parent as a taxpayer as someone who cares about children you know it, it's just not fair to them and I think we continue to do a disservice by saying we're going to provide these resources and year after year we're at the same Place. We're having the same argument, argument, and it seems that the board is not being held accountable for their actions towards our children. I'm not saying that you're supposed to be that oversight for them, but there needs to be some form of oversight, which there is none now. When we're investing more so in, you know, not the direct staff, not the teaching staff, but those paper pushers, you know, what happens to our children? I think it's evident what happens to our children in the testing scores that we see. Uh, we get what we pay for. And we fail to invest in our kids, so we're not seeing the fruits of our labors. So I hope that at some point we will start investing the much needed resources that our kids deserve in order to provide them with an equitable education because we know they start out behind the eight ball and it just gets harder as years go on. So please hear us finally. If you go to Ed site, Dot gov. If you go to the state's web, website and look at their education um, webpage, the site that contains all the testing data for all of the cities and towns throughout the state of Connecticut um, is listed there, and it's edsite.gov or it's edsite.ct.gov. Sid Shulman? Good morning, everybody. Um, I rise, uh, my name is Sid Shulman, 8 High Ledge Road in Bloomfield. I rise to talk in favor of Councilor Mann's uh, resolution tonight on tax incremental financing. Uh, we actually have done it in the town of Bloomfield. We did it a number of years ago. It should be on the table to do whenever we need it. It's a wonderful method of, uh, of um, providing for uh, economic development in the town. 
uh, and I urge you to do whatever we need to to pass the regulations, whatever, to do it. The only thing I would do is um, I would adjust the priority for the, uh, there are three areas listed, uh, the center of town, which undeniably is very important, the uh, Granby Street, Toby Road every area, and Blue Hills, or some areas of Blue Hills. Uh, there is now extensive road uh, work going on on Granby Street, Toby Road. Um, it needed to be done, it should be done, but it's almost wasted if we don't do the rest of the development of Granby Street, Toby Road. As important as the center of town is, uh, there is somewhat limited economic development potential uh, for the area of tax incremental financing in the center of town. Uh, that's because if I, I stand to be corrected, but if I'm not mistaken, uh, you cannot do anything you want with the tax incremental financing uh, program. There are certain things you can do having to do with roads and lights and so forth and so on, but it is limited in how you can spend the money so uh, that you, you earn. So, and I think it would be most productive in the Granby Street, Toby Road area. Additionally, uh, you, if you'll notice, there's a lot of buildings in that area that are for sale, uh, that are vacant, um, a lot more so than two, three years ago. And if we're going to let, the, at, we have an opportunity because for years I was talking with the mayor of Hartford about developing that area commercially as they developed the Hartford Porsche uh, side of the thing uh, for residences. Now they've ripped down Bowles Park for the most part and they're putting up different kinds of residences. I think it's a magnificent opportunity for us to uh, develop that and bring a lot of money to Bloomfield. Now the second thing in the remaining 30 seconds that I have that uh, is very important. I'd like to make sure that everybody knows that tomorrow, April 9th, 2019 is free ice cream day. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, listen, I'm going to be in every ice cream facility that gives free ice cream tomorrow and for my free cone in each one. <laughs> so everybody figure out where the free ice cream is tomorrow in every ice cream venue and eat well. Thank you very much. Sharon, man. Uh, I'm Sharon Mann, 1 Adams Road, Bloomfield. I have two messages tonight. I'm wearing two hats. Um, the first is I want to invite everybody to the uh, Wintonberry Land Trust Wine and Dine event. It's coming up at the end of April, April 27th, and our deadline for tickets and reservations is this Friday, April the 12th. And we have a few seats left, and we really hope that people will come to this. It's our fourth year. It's a event which the Land Trust uses as a fundraiser to protect our natural resources, our farmlands, and our wildlife corridors in our town and surrounding communities. But it's more than that. It's a community dinner. It's people in our community who are opening up their homes for that evening, 14 hosts, and you go first to the Wintonberry Hills Golf Course for um, a wine and hors d'oeuvres, and then you go off to someone's house for dinner. Small, intimate parties from 6 to 12 people. It's always a delight. We love having everyone come together, meet each other, share your stories. That's what community is about in our town. So that's number one, April 27th. And if you want to find out more about it, go to events at wintonberrylandtrust.org. That's our email address if you want information. Or you can go to our website, wintonberrylandtrust.org, and go to events. So my second um, information is you're going to start seeing these blue posters throughout town. It looks small now, but you'll see bigger ones on Facebook, on the um, town website. It's an event being sponsored by the Bloomfield Beautification Committee in Bloomfield. And it's all about Earth Day. Earth Day is April 22nd. 
and I'd like to read it to you. I hope you'll take it to heart, and I hope you'll participate. On Earth Day, April 22nd, we are asking everyone who lives or works in Bloomfield to give two hours to help beautify our town. Pick any spot that needs cleaning, raking or planting, an empty lot, the river, a stretch of road. Do your part for this very special place. Bloomfield, all together now. Thank you. Carlos Cruz. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Carlos Cruz from 20 Harvest Lane. I've been in Bloomfield probably three and a half years or, or so. Uh, what a great town. A couple of things for, I think the change of the guard has happened. Uh, for you who have been reelected, congratulations. For those who have been newly elected, congratulations again. I heard about that and I apologize for not attending the council meetings. Uh, credit where credit's due. Um, you know, this past winter uh, with the Public Works, uh, somebody should commend them or somebody said something about the job they do to clean our streets. Because that's, you, you drive on those streets, and when I drive on the streets, I don't have to worry about a thing because it's taken care of. Two, they did some work in Habitat, and it was the public works staff, I do believe, was doing some of the work, if not all the work. I'd have to say they were professionals, and I love driving on that road. And I understand we have a lot of work to do. And uh, I think you have a great town. And I think, uh, you know, if I could stay here as long as I can before I retire, I do. A, I think it's a great thing. The other thing I want to just let everybody know is the challenges and the budgets that you all do. You're in a municipality. Uh, it's a tax levy, and any time you want money, you're going to have to raise some taxes. And I understand that, or cut some costs. It's a very difficult task. That, but both the board of education, the town council, the public works director, the mayor have to do it. And be cognizant of that. It's not easy. It doesn't come. But then again, let me tell you, I'm all for the kids because education is going to change our world for the better. It will, uh, without question. And I know that. We want to invest in one end, and then we have all these services that have to be done. And I'm just thankful, right? And it's been a few winners that they did a great job, the public works. I just got to say that. So I just came here to say that and see if, you know, what's going on in town. And thank you for the time. And I think we've met before, and I didn't acknowledge you, so my apology, and I'm going to shake your hand. <laughs> That's it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, reports from subcommittees. Community service, Deputy Mayor Curtin. Um, Madam Mayor, I have nothing to report. This committee meets on a quarterly basis. I will report an admin education who met on April 1st. Uh, admin education received the monthly report from the various... Um, various department uh, first report received from human service facility I'm going to give an update the construction project is currently on schedule and uh, on budget the temporary certi certificate of inspections are scheduled for April 24th through May 10th Cert certificate of occupancy will be given to the town on May 21st 2019 the anticipated move-in uh, for the for the various department is scheduled for May 23rd through June 7th. I have to tell you, I've had an opportunity to tour the building with uh, my colleague. I know the mayor uh, told him, uh, tour the building earlier uh, last month with the building committee. And I have to say, it's a building that the community will be proud of. Um, it's very uh, updated, uh, and uh, I think it has all the, the resources needed for our community. So I just want to commend the building committee and everyone, the council for the time that they have put into it when we came uh, on board and pushed the project through. So I think everyone will be happy. They're going to be having a grand opening in, in the month of June. So I invite everyone to come out and attend that event. Um, we also receive an update on the public works facility. The construction project is currently uh, scheduled thus far. Adjustments are being made for, uh, to address the delay. We had, current, we had some delays. The tentative date for completion of is early December of 2019. I think the committee resolved some MDC uh, water flow issues uh, that affected the project in the early phase. So we're actually getting over that. And the PSD construction is doing well. 
on a, and we have a, we have currently, we have a GMP of currently around 9.8 million for the project. So I'll have for the updates on you regarding that uh, construction project that's also uh, on the go. We also receive a report from a rezoning enforcement officer, Mike Casella. Uh, the, this, this council and the committee provided Mike with some guidelines for reporting. Uh, we felt that we need to have a more insight of what's going on with the various uh, uh, issues within the town. I think it's important to this council to address those issues and work with the community to improve our community. We're all proud of this town and we're going to do everything possible to make sure that we're doing everything that we need to do to improve. So I have to say that Mike has been making some improvements through that area and the council and the committee will continue to work with, with that department. Under old business, the council referred item 19-45, discussion of possible action regarding the policy requirements for board and commission. Uh, there was some discussion earlier in the process in regards to the reporting of the various commissioners, uh, boards and commissions for the town, whether or not they should come on a monthly or quarterly basis to report to the council on any issue. The one highlight that we had was the MDC commissioner. Uh, we wanted to, to make sure that we were understanding what's going on with the MDC and the various policies that they were trying to push through to give us a heads up in advance instead of a last minute thing. So I think the committee, uh, my colleague, Councilman Mann, is working with uh, a few other folks to make sure that we have some sort of reporting mechanism in place to address some of those issues. On the new business, we received a report uh, from Cindy, our uh, HR director, in regards to our currently affirmative action and plan update. I have to say the town of Bloomfield had made uh, in the last few years or so a lot of strive to create a very diverse workforce. And I have to commend them on the work that they're doing. And this council is committed to make sure that we continue moving into that, uh, into that process to make sure our workforce reflects our town. So that's the end of my report, and I just want to continue, everyone to c continue to come out to those committee meetings. It's important to hear your input and feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as, as we mentioned at the last council meeting, we've actually been in, in uh, more involved with the finance committee of the whole, i.e. the council during budget season. So we will uh, be meeting on Monday, April 15th week from today uh, be looking for the agenda of that in the next few days or you know later in the week as we put the agenda together and uh, we will have a report next council meeting thank you thank you madam mayor <coughs> uh, the public safety uh, committee did not meet tonight uh, due to the fact that we had an executive session on personnel um, and we had to cancel that because we have a number of things going on the budget the town manager search and so this was the day that we needed to uh, cancel the meeting so we could fit everything in this week. So I hope that we meet uh, next month and that we will have an update on the communication system. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Committee on Committees did not meet this month due to budget uh, time situations. However, the uh, Land Use and Economic Development Committee did meet on April 3rd to deal with two issues. One is the ongoing discussion of the renewal of our Reservoir 2 lease. That's the property that's just north of Seabury. It's state-owned. It's part of a lease to the town that's existed for 50 years. And uh, David Malesko, the head of Leisure Services, has been uh, leading the charge here to figure out what it is the state's looking for and, and respond to their uh, in needs for information. So he has promised us that there's appear to be a res uh, next month, month of May, we should get a response back from DEP and see which way we're going. There are some concerns that we have with continuing this lease in terms of its, its uh, impact upon the town or its resources, its impact upon the, the residents in that area. So we're looking into these. The um, other perhaps more major issue that the uh, Land Use and Economic Development Committee took up was the tax increment financing idea. This is an idea that's been around, as uh, you heard uh, Councilman Schulman before, former mayor, been around for a few years, been discussed in land use and economic development. It's been discussed in our Economic Development Commission, and it's a, it's a, uh, a, a concept by which we, we can bond 
for the for the difference between the present value of a property's taxable value and the future value based on some development proposal and it's something that we'll talk about further uh, in the next item of business but it's something that the town has been very careful about moving forward with before everybody making sure everybody was on board before we we launched this so we've taken the time to look at it carefully and we're prepared to make a recommendation tonight thank you regarding trail connections between the Buck property and Simsbury Land Trust property. Oh, Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, I would like to refer this item to the Land Use and Economic Development Subcommittee for re review and recommendation back to the Council. Um, if, uh, if people would like, uh, perhaps Manager Shane could uh, tell us what this is about. Thank you. Oh, oh. Uh, Kevin said you can go ahead and fill Elaborate. us in on Elaborate a little bit more. Elaborate a little bit more. Oh, just, <clears throat> uh, just by way of background, the uh, Buck property was a donation made to the town of Bloomfield uh, last year. Uh, it's about 28 acres. Uh, most of it is in Bloomfield. I think there's two or three uh, acres that are in Simsbury. It does connect into the Simsbury trail system, and I think it was a, a real... Uh, benefit to the town to have it donated. I think that the uh, Parks and Recreation Committee, and I believe uh, Paula Jones is here representing them this evening, as well as the town staff are recommending that the council uh, go ahead and move forward with this by referring it to the Land Use and Economic Development Subcommittee. Uh, I second that motion, Madam Mayor. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. 1819-52, consider and take action regarding tax refunds. Uh, yes, Mayor. These are our standard uh, tax uh, refunds that uh, occasionally come before the town council. There is one substantial uh, refund in there, uh, but the background information should satisfy uh, anybody that has questions concerning uh, that. It is significant, but... Uh, I think, again, it uh, is adequately explained uh, as, a, as a reimbursement. If there are any further questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, I will uh, move that we accept the uh, tax refunds on the attached list and they be improved in accordance with the, uh, with the, the memorandum. Second. Are there any further discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any op all opposed? Any, abstain. Any abstentions? Motion, Motion carries unanimously. 1819-53, consider and take action regarding the tax increment finances. Council Thank you, Madam Mayor. Before I introduce a resolution or a recommendation that uh, came out of the committee, I wanted to just make some prefer prefer preferencing remarks, prefatory remarks. Uh, your committee and, and the town staff has been looking at TIF for good couple of years now. We think there are three opportune areas that we could employ this tool. Uh, it was already mentioned the Town Center, Granby Street, and Blue Hills Avenue. The Town Council has put aside some money in this budget for a consultant, a legal consultant, to help us prepare the language and the guidelines and requirements in order to do this right. So uh, it, we understand that we may be able to get two maybe three areas out of the amount of money we put into this. Our goal is not to rush through and get three areas. Our goal is to get something done and get it done right. So we think we can, we, we can, we've, we've established a priority for the, the town center and for Granby Street with Blue Hills area being the follow-up area. And we haven't really defined what area of Blue Hills Avenue that is. You know, it's a long street. So the two areas are pretty well defined in Granby Street and, and Town Center. And those are the ones that the our committee, the Land Use, Sub and, and, uh, uh, Land Use and Economic Development Subcommittee and the Economic uh, uh, Commission have both chosen as their priorities. So with that in mind, I'd like to read this uh, resolution because it will provide for the public a little bit more information as to what it is we're talking about here. Whereas the town of Bloomfield endeavors to continue progress toward economic development and community improvement, and whereas local budgets and funding sources are in stress requiring more innovative strategies to keep our town on a forward track, 
whereas tax increment financing provides a source of funding derived from anticipated increases in the value of real property due to pre-agreed upon improvement strategies, and whereas the value increase can generate special revenue bonds that are not backed by the full faith and credit of the town of Bloomfield, very important point, resulting in no liability or consequence to the town's cost of capital. And whereas in contrast to other traditional redevelopment vehicles, TIF does not require five to seven years to raise funds or fulfill state and federal requirements and can be initiated with it when a developer comes forward with a plan to immediately meet the town's redevelopment requirements for a given area. And before a TIF area or program can be initiated, the town must engage in legal consultant for the purposes of preparing TIF regulations and guidelines that include sufficient opportunity for public hearing to inform residents before adoption. And whereas the Bloomfield Town Council and Bloomfield Economic Development Commission have been researching this possibility of multiple TIFs, TIF areas for the past year or so to include the Town Center, Granby Street, Toby Road, and portions of Blue Hills Avenue. And whereas the EDC voted to endorse the, the TIF, TIF concept, however, funding for the uh, for the FY 2019-20 budget may only finance one, two, perhaps two. Now therefore resolve that the Land Use and Economic Development Subcommittee hereby endorses and recommends to the full council developing one or more TIF districts in order of priority Town Center, Granby Street, Toby Road, Blue Hills Avenue. Uh, Madam Mayor, second that motion, but would like a friendly amendment for my colleague just to the last section where it says um, the town center, Granby Street, Toby Road, and Blue Hills, for us to switch it and have, because we, because initially the committee that I'm on, we talked about Granby Street, Toby Road has the most potential right now with everything that's going on in Hartford, and we wanted to make that adjustment. So what I would say, we're going ahead with the two, but I would like to put more preference on Granby Street, Toby Road, to be first. All right. Can I? I would entertain that. I would, I would have to uh, inform you that the Economic Development Commission's primary motivation for this was to be in a position to act proactively on a major piece of real estate in the town center. Correct. So will you take a friendly amendment? I would take it. I think we can do both. I think that's yeah, the goal. But just, yeah, and I agree with you. But I'm not sure I want, I don't know if we need to make the change. I think I'm willing to do both. Yeah. Okay. I think we should. I think we should. Uh, we'll see so what can I get a second on the friendly amendment? Second. Discussions? I, 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 I think it's very, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think it's very important that we do both. And I, I really don't like to see as prior, prior to, where, whichever one has the first development, which appears to be the center. So I don't see why it, uh, why it, we need to change the priorities, just say we want to do both. And if Pooh Hills can happen, I, I, that'd be great too, but um, we don't really have a defined area there where we know these other two areas have very definite needs and I need think I think we shouldn't sell for just one of them. We want both. Um, I would agree um, with the Deputy Mayor about uh, Granby, Row, uh, Granby Street and Toby Row. However, in its current form, the way it's written, it's a lot of gray area or means something like and if, like it's, it's up in the air, it's not quite, we don't know. Um, so if we agree that we want to do both, we should make the language say that we are going to do both and make sure that the funding is in the budget to do okay. both. Um, because as we know, um, gray areas lead to confusion and legal opinions and other people interpretation. <laughs> so um, we need to make sure that it says uh, both. And I just want to, Madam Mayor? Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, I just want to also just emphasize that we have 60000 in the budget. We don't know actually what's the true cost for the two locations, for the two area. So the reason why I amended uh, that is to say, if we could only go ahead and do one, we'll focus on the Toby Road, Granby Street. I would like to um, endorse that because there's a lot of work that you I'm so sorry. <laughs> Very sorry. 
I'd like to endorse the fact that we look at the Granby Street Toby Road area first. There's a lot of development going on in that area. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has driven by to see what the old Bowles Park look like. It's amazing, right? It's, it's just an amazing redevelopment that they have going on down there. And we have so many buildings on Granby Street that's available and vacant that we can probably entice someone to come and do something in that area. I know that the center is an eyesore. But I believe that we have a lot more development um, opportunities on, on the Granby Street, Toby Road area. So I am definitely in favor in making that a priority. Councilor Mann. Uh, I certainly have no problem accepting both areas. I would prefer, if you feel you want to do two areas, that if there's a shortage of funds for the consultant, that you'll be willing to put up the difference so that you can move forward on both areas. Because I think both are critical to the town. Both are well-defined areas where you can develop a, a, uh, uh, an intelligent use plan for the area and uh, see it through. Uh, whereas whereas we, we wanted to try something on Blue Hills Avenue, but we haven't been able to pin it down. Once we get into the discussion with the consultant, maybe we'll get a better understanding. But So I would ask, if you're going to make a, an amendment, would you be willing to add more money if we need to pay for the second uh, district? Deputy Mayor. Yeah. I, I think right now we're looking to make cuts across the board and I would not at this point endorse uh, putting any more funds in the budget for that. I think we have to be consistent. We've talked about, uh, you know, we're cutting the school's budget and I think we got to be consistent. I agree with my colleague that there is potential for the, the, town, uh, the town center, but drive by Toby Road. That whole development there, there's great potential. Those folks have to go somewhere, and why not Bloomfield? If I had to make a decision between going to Hart, the, center, the center of Hartford or right next door, Bloomfield, the potential is there. And I say we have to have uh, foresight and capitalize on that. Yeah. Councilor Goff? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I sort of agree with everybody in this conversation. Uh, um, one of the difficulties with this TIF, um, the TIF actually moving this forward has actually been that the, our consultant, Goman and York, who have done, I think have done a very good job of laying out what the tax increment financing would involve, doing some simulations of it, <coughs> thing, things of that nature. They haven't done a great job of really getting us a cost estimate of what it costs <coughs> to do one of these. And we have been assured repeatedly that it's going, I mean, this makes sense. It's going to be cheaper to do two. It's going to be cheaper to do three because, you know, once you're putting this material <coughs> together, you, there's not going to be a drastic difference between uh, tax increment financing zone one and tax, tax increment financing zone two. So I think one of the frustrations <coughs> is uh, initially we were told it was going to be forty to sixty thousand dollars per area, uh, but then we were told, well, no, there'll be cost savings. Recently, we were told it's potentially the case that with what we have in the budget with $60,000 when we go out to the consultant that's been recommended, that could cover everything. So I, I think that's a very nebulous thing up in the air. I agree completely with my colleague, uh, Deputy Mayor Curtin, that we do have to be consistent across the board in being, uh, in being um, uh, uh, fiscally responsible for, for things, but I also think you can be penny wise and pound foolish here. Um, I would certainly, I certainly support the idea that we need to do this first and foremost in Toby Road, uh, uh, Granby Street, Toby Road. I think the potential there is enormous and I think it's not just the street itself, but it's the corridor but, but behind it from the University of Hartford to uh, along the Greenway where Hooker Brewery is, is all of that. that. That area could be a show place for Bloomfield. But it's also potential. We also have the center of town. We know we have to do something in the center of town. One of the things, as my colleague uh, Councilor Mann said, is one of the reasons this was even discussed in the first place was to make sure that we had some tools in place should a certain large property in the center of town become available. So I also think that's important, and we also know that there are two or three real in-progress projects in the center of the town environs. So um, 
what I would really advise we do is I would, I would, I would go along with my uh, colleague, Councilor McClary. I think we should make sure that we are committed to doing two. If we don't want to change the budget at this point and have 60, we do have a healthy council contingency. And I think, I, I would hope it's the feeling of this council that we want to get these two areas done. I really don't, you know, I, I, I think they're, they're very important, so. So, would he, <clears throat> would my colleague take a friend, friendly amendment, a friendly, friendly amendment to the, the, the statutory language here to recommend to the full council in developing two uh, TIF districts in order to pr prioritize Granby Street, Toby Road, and the town center. So say develop two or more? No, not or more, just two, because we know those are the focus. And then let's focus on those two. And then once we get those two established, then, then and it's successful, then we move out to Blue Hills because then we have a precedent, we understand what goes into it. So I would recommend saying develop two of tax and uh, TIF districts in order to prioritize Granby Street, Toby Road, and the town center. Do I have a second? A second. A, a second. So, you, so, right. Any more discussions? Uh, no, I, I just want to make one comment, one more comment on tax increment financing relative to former Mayor Shulman here this evening. Um, the, it actually, one of the things that's going to be important when we put this in place is that we do specify what the money can be used for because uh, uh, former Mayor Sherman was a little, uh, he said it's very restricted. Well, it actually, if in its pure statutory form, it's pretty expansive. And I think we all in the council agree that we want the money, since it is our tax money that we are letting be used up front, we want it used for public amenities, particularly the infrastructure and the stuff. So I, I just wanted to make that note from what he said earlier. Thank you, Madam Mayor. All in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries with the uh, corrections, with the amendments. 1819-55, um, consider and take possible action concerning settlement of pending tax appeals. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> based upon the recommendations of the town attorney at our previous uh, executive session, I would recommend that the council move to uh, uh, settle a claim uh, with CIT financials uh, for one half of the penalty that they paid, approximately $26,000. Uh, this was done uh, out of error by CIT financial, uh, so that the town is basically refunding part of a penalty that was unintentionally uh, incurred at the time. So moved. Any, dis uh, any discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. A report from our town manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have very few items because we've really been preoccupied the last few weeks with the budget process. But I'd like to remind everybody that the uh, t annual town and budget meeting will be held at 7 p.m. on May 6th at Bloomfield High School. Uh, we urge you to come out. Uh, the council will uh, hopefully be uh, uh, reviewing the budget at that time, and uh, you'll have an opportunity to speak uh, concerning the budget. Uh, our street sweeping program has begun. Uh, this is uh, carried out throughout the community, uh, primarily a as a result of winter maintenance activities and also both federal environmental protection agency and state requirements that uh, any residual materials, winter maintenance materials be uh, picked up. Uh, this will be followed by a catch basin cleaning uh, as well. Uh, lastly, I'd like to uh, refer everybody to the town hall website. Our Celebrate Bloomfield uh, program is coming up on June 7th and 8th and we'd love to have all of you obviously attend that at the time. That completes my report. Thank you. Um, so I have probably a lengthy mayor's report. Um, a couple of things. We did have our two, town ca two candidates for town manager come out and meet the public. Um, I think that was a very good showing. Thank you for all those who came out and were part of the process. We do have a difficult decision to make, but we do have to make a decision. 
We thank you for your input, for those that were here that spoke to us individually, and for those who emailed our executive search firm, Randy Frank. We thank you for the input. We thank you for the input of the staff. Um, Okay, so we had a whole uh, process of finding candidates for our new town manager. Right. It I was. Know. I don't know how you. So. I, I was never informed that I could be part of the process. Okay, so unfortunately, um, I'm sorry that you didn't get that information first and foremost, but the information was in the, the messenger, the information was on BATV, the information was online. The information was on Facebook. I think people posted it and reposted it and posted it again. Um, so I'm very sorry that you missed that whole process. Totally sorry. Um, but we did go through a process. Um, we hired an executive search firm. Please forgive me. Indulge. We had an executive search firm. Uh, they came. They spoke to the residents. They spoke to the council. They spoke to some employees about what we might be looking for in a town manager. They made a profile. They sent that out to all of their networks. They uh, received 13 responses. They whittled it down to five. We had Skype interviews. Thank God for technology. Um, and then the council whittled the five down to two. When we got to the two, we flew them here. Um, one was named Mr. Robert Wood. He's from Austin, Texas. And the other name is Mr. John Pate. He's from outside of Chicago. Two phenomenal gentlemen that could more than well do the job. We're very aware that they can never fill Bill's shoe, but hopefully one of them will grow into it and hopefully outgrow it. Um, I don't have that large a foot. So, <laughs> so and, and that was on that was on TV, so probably you can go back um, on the web and go to BATV and just look at their um, interaction on the Friday evening. Um, so we're at a point now where we're going to figure out where we go in our process, if we're going to go visit, if we need to get more information, whatever it is that we're going to do so that we can make the best decision possible for our town. So that's the first update that I wanted to give. The second update is Hartford Athletic. It's a new professional soccer team is now here in Connecticut. They have an event called Rock the Rent on May 4th and it would be great if Bloomfield went out to help them rock the rent, whatever all that means. So for the last um, for the last few meetings, we have had some angst, we have had some um, disagreements, we've had some. I get stuck when I can't find the politically correct thing to say. But anyway, um, we appreciate the parents coming out and giving us your thoughts and your feelings about the Board of Ed. I thank you, Mr. Carlos, for coming out and realizing that there's some great things happening, especially that your, your street is being taken care of and DPW is doing their job. And you realize that we have a difficult job with the budget for this year. However, there was a shortfall in the school budget <coughs> for this coming year. And this, this current year, this current fiscal year, and we had to do something as a council. As a council, we realized that the most important thing when it comes to education is our students. We also realized that the most important thing as council is that we're always mindful of our residents. The school board and the town, we're one town. We might be separated by um, statutes, but we're still one town. What happens to the school board affects the town. What happens to the town affects the school board. So there's no way that we can sit here and see that there's a problem and not try to help. The hard part is not just writing blank checks. The hard part is making sure that while we are providing help, we also provide the necessary tools to make sure that we don't end up in this situation again. So while there were counselors that just wanted to give a blank check to the Board of Ed, there was also a few counselors who decided to do the hard work to meet with the Board of Ed, 
to come to a conclusion so that we can move together as one Bloomfield. And that has been done, right? Um, we met with the board chair, Mr. Don Harris, the deputy mayor, and the chair of the finance committee, <coughs> Councillor Goff. And it took some time, but I believe that we can support each other, the Board of Ed and the town, in moving forward with an agreement. And so I'm going to take the time to read the agreement that was just signed today. Both the mayor and the Board of Education chair agree to support and work towards the study to implement the the study and implementation of the following goals and policies in an effort to foster better communication, cooperation, transmission of information, and efficiencies for both the Town of Bloomfield and the Board of Education. Fostering a quality educational system and excellent town services which meet the needs of our students and residents, constituents, the foundation of a viable and successful community. To that end, we will both work with our representatives respective colleagues and staff to explain the goals and policies set forth herein and to obtain support for the study and implementation by our respective elective bodies of the following proposal. The Town Council will agree to reduce the required surplus requirement for the Edu Employee Health Insurance Reserve Fund from six months to three months to make up potential shortfalls from reduced premium contributions by the Board of Education in the Board of Education fiscal year 2018-19 budget. The approximate surplus reduction resulting from this source is estimated at $1.6 million. The Town Council and Board of Ed will enter into a written agreement governing the funds which will be defined required contributions, the role of the third party administrator, purpose and scope of fund application, payment of medical claims only, proper use and level of reserves, and use of stopgap insurance of the fund surplus. The entire fund will be available to cover excess claims by either Board of Ed or Town, provided the required premium payments are made by each party. Town Council will, will recommend a 3% increase in the Board of Education budget for 2019-2020, which is approximately $1.3 million. The Board of Ed will make appropriate cuts from its requested budget increase of 11% to fund services with this budgetary allocation. The Town Council will have its actuary re review the OPEB fund as the BOE may have paid in more than the required yearly amount which, if correct, will allow the Board of Ed to reduce its contributions for the coming fiscal year. The Town Council and Board of Ed agree over the coming year to jointly study the goals of implementing shared services, which will provide efficiencies for both the Town and the Board of Ed in the following areas. Complete the accounting system conversion newness system by end of 2019 to identify areas for the Town to assume or assist with Board of Ed HR functions for non-teacher for non-teacher employees working with assigned Board of Ed staff and Labor Council to work towards the integration of the Board of Ed IT department into the town's IT department, to combine the Board of Ed payroll department into the town's payroll department, to merge the Board of Ed facility department into the town's facility management. To integrate the Board of Ed and Town Finance Department, which for example may consist of one director overseeing designated staff from each entity to achieve financial efficiencies, shared information, and coordination. Other shared services may be considered in a planned dialogue over the coming year. In working to accomplish these goals, the Board of Ed and Town Council will direct their rep respective labor councils to address these issues as part of current and upcoming negotiations with union representatives. The parties agree to expeditiously work towards entering into a formal agreement signed by the parties necessary to commit the Board of Education and Town Council before the end of this month to formalize the provision set forth herein that addresses the future administration and use of the fund. Both parties will establish working committees of staff and officials within two months to commence study and submission of a plan <coughs> to address the proposed areas of shared services set forth in paragraph five. The Town Council and Board of Education um, will issue a joint statement in how this will take place. 
In achieving these goals and proposals, we urge the town council and board members to be supportive and positive of these new approaches to better to promote cooperation, communication, and shared services. We will trust that such joint efforts will create better understanding of the respective responsibilities and challenges for each. The town council and the board of education, especially as it may impact fiscal policy and services, we will do our best to share our joint vision with the public and urge our colleagues to embrace the spirit of cooperation. Now, we realize that there's a lot of work to do. We realize that there's going to be um, entities that will do st uh, studies on shared uh, services. We realize that everything is not perfect, but we also realize that we need to support the, ed the Board of Ed. We need to get to a place where our town is whole, meaning the Board of Ed has the resources that they need that go straight to our students and that the parents feel comfortable sending their students to our public schools and that people feel comfortable moving into our town and that businesses feel comfortable coming into our town. Epic economic development is all connected and so therefore we have to do our best to be able to work together cooperatively and in a united fashion. So that's where we are, as open and as transparent as possible, but please understand it's a work in progress. We do not want to see our Board of Ed fail. We do not want to see our students fail. I believe that we are moving in the right direction. It's a start, but there is a lot more work to be done. Thank you for indulging me. Clarifying questions. Clarifying questions. Yes. Okay. Angelique Crosdale Mills, uh, 18 Greenbrier Drive. Uh, what's the timeline on this, and will the board be expected to hire a consultant to do the study, and where will that money come from? So, in the town's budget, there is a amount that um, we have already put in the budget that will take care of this uh, study. We did not want to hamper the board with that finance, and the council has decided to put it into their budget. So will this be an independent forensic study, or will this be an, just another study that the board will conduct by themselves? Uh, <clears throat> pursuant to the request of the, uh, actually this started in the prior council, uh, and then was taken up by this council, we've had a shared services committee with the Board of Ed uh, working on these uh, four areas that uh, were outlined by the mayor. There's $21,000 in the town council's uh, fiscal year 1920, the upcoming fiscal year, uh, to move ahead with it. The joint committee that we have uh, went ahead and put out a request for proposal, interviewed consultants, and selected a consultant and now we're waiting for the hopefully the budget to be approved uh, with some funding the twenty one thousand dollars in there and then we'll be moving ahead with that it this may require additional funding it may require uh, uh, resourcing of various kinds, uh, not only money, but uh, legal expertise and uh, consulting expertise and so forth as we move forward into each of these areas. But I'm confident uh, from an administrative standpoint that the council is supportive of it, the Board of Education is supportive of it, and we just uh, need to go ahead and start moving ahead. Many other communities have looked at these uh, specific uh, shared services areas and have been successful, uh, particularly in the finance area, in integrating these services. These things aren't always easy, but I think you've got committed boards and you've got committed staff on both sides uh, uh, that have already been working together for almost a year since uh, uh, we started this effort uh, this past year, so I'm, I'm confident and, and positive about it. What is the likelihood that the director, both the, you mentioned there will be two directors, one from the Board of Ed and then the one from the town for the fiscal component? Is it, did I miss here? No, you didn't. So you misspoke. You did, uh, no. Um, you heard that it's a possibility. So the idea of this is a framework. Um, I think we're going to rely heavily on the consultants that come in and give us better direction 
on what's the best way to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. Here's my thought. I just don't want us to integrate and we still end up with this same body of individuals, same amount of individuals. Um, so you have two of everybody. It doesn't really, it's not cost effective. Correct. So and that, that will all be a part of the study. Okay. Right, because right. we're, we're hope we, it's, it's shared services should yield a savings at some point, should talk about efficiencies and duplication of efforts so that we will make sure that we take care of all of that. As long as we're all on the same page, because at the end of the day, it is, we're supposed to be gaining those resources to put back to frontline correct. costs. Correct. Okay. That's correct. That's right. why we've gone out to an independent body to come in and take a look and give us a roadmap on where we need to go. I'm not pleased, but thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have a comment. Yes. On, on paragraph three of your document, it's, it's number, number three. I just want to make that correction because it says um, budget for 2019-2010, and it should be 2019-2020. I'm not sure what you're talking about. On your document you just read. 971. It's, there are numbers on there? Number three. Number three. It says uh, town council will recommend a 3% increase in the BOE budget for 2019-2020. Okay, because the document that you sent says 2010. Oh, this one it says 2020. Okay. Okay. And, and then um, also, is it possible for the parents to get a copy of this document? It's a public document. If they want that. It's a public document. And actually, I'll give it to India so that we can include it. It's all public. Anything else? Uh, Councilor McCleary. So, um, I haven't read the document in its entirety because obviously we just got it. Um, and a lot of things have been going, o going on over the last couple of weeks. And, and I've tried to sit back and just be quiet and listen and watch. Um, but there was a comment made that counselors wanted to give a blank check to the Board of Ed. And I don't think that's true, and that certain counselors did the work. I don't think that's true. I think everybody wanted to be engaged um, in the process um, and was not allowed to be engaged in the process. Um, so um, I don't want to make it seem like I'm being bitter or harping or being um, negative. I think it's a good step in, in the right direction. Um, however, um, I did my due diligence, and uh, I can assure you that the cuts that the Board of Ed has agreed to make, I guarantee you it's going to be the teachers in the classrooms and that budget that the principals, not the parents, that the principals, the support staff that the principals requested, I guarantee you those were the cuts, they're going to make those cuts and the kids are going to be hurt by those cuts. Um, so um, moving forward, you know, I would hope that certain members of this board um, will be you know, we say transparent, but we'll open up the process so that everybody uh, is able to be engaged in the process. Okay. Um, and I know there's going to be propaganda of, oh, we can't have a meeting of, of five counselors. We can't notice the, the budget. And, but don't say that there were members of this, of this council that wanted to give a blank check to the board, because I don't think anybody on this council wanted to give a blank check to the Board of Ed. Deputy Mayor? Uh, Madam Mayor, through you, I would just like to say that um, I want to commend the process. I think it was I, I think it was a transparent process. And to be frank with you, you cannot have everyone at the table trying to hash out um, uh, what we try to uh, do with the Board of Ed. I think, to be honest and transparent, since we're at that point, I think a couple of our colleagues on this council was trying to undermine the process. The, in, the intent the intent was to work with the Board of Ed along with the council. If you go around to various towns with everything that's going on within our state, I think it's imperative for towns to work together to make sure that we're doing the right thing for our town. And I think this council made the right steps in doing that. So I'm not sure what's going on here as far as the comments that are being made tonight. I think everyone had a chance to chime in. Some folks choose not to. Some counselors choose to go through the budget with a fine teeth comb and look at the issues and brought the questions to the forefront. Thank you. Excuse me. Um, Madam Mayor, 
quick? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do, me, do me a favor, please, before yeah. you start. Can you go to the mic, yeah. give your name and your address? Yeah. My name is Deborah LaBelle, and I live at 22 Pine Grove Road in Bloomfield. Um, I, I'm sitting here thinking that this is just a meeting about Board of Education, no. and, and that's not what I thought I was coming to. I thought I was coming to a town meeting. You're correct. And so what I want to add is my um, discomfort with um, the police department, as far as overnight parking, overlooking certain traffic, um, tickets, um, speeding down my street. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, so, is this your first time at council? Well, I used to be on a committee. Okay, so when we first came in and the people spoke, where, it, where we talked about citizens uh, statements and petitions that's where you were able to bring up this. Well, I know but now you're not letting me do that well we passed that on the okay. uh, agenda so, so I'm now being dismissed no I'm yeah, not dismissing yeah, yeah. you yes you are you're dismissing me because now I'm out of order okay pardon me thank you okay thanks okay um, so at this time we're going to, I feel like I needed to explain that. Um, for the viewing audience, for those who don't come to council, um, when you come in, the agenda specifically states there's a portion for citizen statements and petition. That's at the beginning of the meeting. You come in, you sign your name, you get three minutes, you can talk about anything you want to talk about at that time. Once that portion has been passed, we're now moving on to the agenda. So when this lady wanted to say something, I thought she was going to say something about what I had just said. I don't want it to seem like um, that we are not welcoming at the town council or that we're not open to hear anyone's viewpoints. Okay, with that being said, um, is there a motion for the approval of minutes? So move. Second. Any discussions? Yes, Councillor DiLorenzo. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I had one minor edit that I provided to India Rogers, uh, our clerk, so she will make that. So with that, I would ask that we amend the motion to incorporate those changes in the minutes. I accept the amendment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Um, we're going to start with council comments. I'm going to start with Councillor McClary. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to use the time to respond uh, to the Deputy Mayor's comment about certain councilors want to undermine the process. So here's how it went. Uh, there was a meeting. At, I'm not saying I'm against this agreement. I haven't read the agreement. I received the, the agreement at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Didn't have time uh, to review it. Um, so when I get home, I will read the document to provide um, my comments. But I did read the first draft of the document um, because it was sent to me. Um, I didn't know. Uh, I've was trying to request where uh, meetings was going to be happening with uh, the Board of Education, and the document was sent to me by the Republican Town Chair. He received the document before any of the other councilors received the document. There was meetings that were going on that councilors uh, were um, interested in, um, in, 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 in attending, and one councilor was walked out. Um, it wasn't until some council members got the document that the Gang of Four wanted to um, wanted to make the document public and it just it just it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't uh it wasn't the, the process wasn't kosher but needless to say um from the draft i think it's a good concept with shared services um i will read the document but to say that certain members of this council does not want to be do not want to be engaged in the process and serve the the people of bloomfield is not true and that we try to undermine the process for the the, the board of ed that is what this whole pro cleaning up this the mess that the Board of Ed created that certain councilors try to undermine it is not true. Uh, my second issue is um, with the council council rules and I hope that we can address this uh, moving forward in admin and administration um, where uh, there was an agenda item placed on the uh, agenda um, and it was removed. I, I was under the interpretation that um, all councilors had the ability to um, 
place an item on the agenda, whether we agree with it or not. The item was placed on the agenda. We should have let the process play out as democracy. Um, if there were deals and negotiation going on, make it open, refer to council, table the item. Do, it is a bad precedent for a council member to place something on the agenda and then whoever, council leadership, unilaterally comes around and take it off. It is a bad precedent in this town. And if we are going to go down that route, we need to create a charter co revision committee and make this town a strong mayor town. If not, we need to let the process play out. If it's in the rules and there's some gray areas, we need to fix the rules to allow every council member to be to have the ability to place something on this agenda. And that concludes my comments. Councilor Goff. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I guess I will address two things. Um, I'll address the rules issue first. Um, there are gray areas in the rules, but it has never been a rule in this council, since I've been on it for almost a year and a half now, that items submitted by a council member are mandatorily placed on the agenda. That just is not the case. I have submitted several, at least I can think of at least three times, I have submitted items for the agenda that were not put on the agenda and I was given, I was not necessarily given a reason. I was not necessarily upset about that, uh, but the, if you read the rules, section T of the rules, it makes clear that the mayor, you know, the, the town manager puts together an agenda which the mayor um, essentially, it doesn't say approve, but the, the, the content of the um, section is that the mayor has ultimate control over that and that the agenda is put together from items suggested by the town manager, items coming before the, <clears throat> the council from that, that way and from items submitted by council members. So I, I'm sorry, it, it's just not there. Now, to Councilor McClary's point, um, if we want to change the rules and make it such that it is mandatory that any item submitted by a councilor go on the uh, go on the agenda, we can discuss that. Uh, I would argue that while that may sound um, nice in the beginning, uh, it sort of creates chaos uh, because we all could um, decide that we're going to filibuster by putting 20 items on the agenda. So I think we have to have some kind of um, way of, uh, of working this and my view is that what was uh, the, the issues with the agenda were resolved in the proper manner. Um, the second item I want to, want, to, want to take up here is the uh, issue of how you get a negotiation, uh, how you get an outcome uh, that the mayor uh, read earlier. Um, I think it is, I can, I think we have to be careful of saying people did or did not participate because I do not want to make those kinds of accusations or that people, uh, the, the people tried to do this or that to the process. But I also think, as Council McClary referred to, um, when the folks from the council uh, and I was involved in that because I am the chair of the finance committee and that's the only reason I was involved in it. Uh, when the folks in the council were involved, we went into a negotiation and a discussion where we thought documents were being confidentially kept confidentially. We did not release those to our colleagues because we thought from the ethics involved, they were documents that were working documents for discussion. As soon as we, as soon as we got to the point where it was a uh, basic agreement, the red line was released to the council. So I'm not the Republican I'm chair, chair of the Republican Party. I don't know how that person got it, yeah. and um, you know, uh, I'm not responsible for that. So um, I, I, apolo I apologize for that, but I, I think I, I think that it's um, dangerous to blame folks on the council for, for breaking protocols that they didn't break. Thank you. Councilor DiLorenzo. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just have two things. Uh, the first one is with regard to the TIF, and um, I'm sure Councilor Mann will speak on this, but I think it's a really good thing for the town of Bloomfield that we finally come to the conclusion that we're able to move forward with this. 
I do want to say, though, that the Blue Hills Avenue uh, is not being forgotten. Even if we're only able to do two out of those three, uh, the Town Center and the Toby Granby Street area, we have other things around Blue Hills Avenue that have been in the works for some time. And it might even make more sense to keep Blue Hills off of this for now until we figure out what direction we're going to go in. So we had some grant money. We had some other monies where there was a design that came in for a portion of Blue Hills Avenue. So we wanted to try to see what we could do to get the rest of Blue Hills Avenue done. So I think, uh, you know, as, as the Deputy Mayor, I believe, mentioned, we had 60 k in the budget for this year. And, and we believe, based on the information that we got from Goman and York, our economic development advisors, that um, the 60 k should be sufficient, that if we want to do more than one TIF, we should be able to get it done with a 60 k that's in the budget. So uh, more to come on that. And I'm sure that if, if we can't do two for the 60 k we'll figure out a way to uh, come back to the full council and see if we could secure some additional funds for that. Uh, the second comment I wanted to make is regard to Philly Park. And I hope that they will be here at our next uh, town council session. Uh, but some very, very good news, and I believe this will be posted out on the uh, Bloomfield Facebook site. But uh, the Philly Park Committee has authorized uh, the Bloomfield Director of Finance to begin drawing from the committee's escrowed account of $50,000. And this will be toward the purchase of the pavers on the pedestrian bridge, a gazebo, native shrubs, trees, and perennials. And this is all due to the generous donations of Bloomfield residents. This 50 k is not costs that are coming out of the town budget. This is all money that has been raised by your Philly Park Committee. And I think everyone should be really proud of this. <clears throat> and uh, this has been a long time, and this is such a milestone that they have achieved. So uh, these costs are not coming out of the town budget, but instead have been contributed by the citizens for the rebirth of Philly Park. So um, phase three, which will be starting in May, it's going to include the pavers, and a portion of the pavers are going to be engraved re as requested by the Friends of Philly Park. And so there's still time for you to be involved in this. You can go out to phillypark.org. You could see, hear, see, and hear all, read all about the rebirth of Philly Park. You can purchase a paver. And uh, I think hopefully the next time uh, you're walking by that area, you should see the pond is, is full of water instead of uh, dirt. <laughs> and uh, you can start to see the improvements uh, coming around at Philly Park. So again, uh, congratulations to the Philly Park Committee. And Council that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Councilor Mann. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. A couple of uh, announcements. Uh, Thursday at 1.30 at the Senior Center, there's a volunteer lunch for all the people that come out to help mm. at the Senior Center. Uh, this is the way they're repaid. So some last year, several council members went and helped serve meals. It's a, it's a, it's a nice, it's a fun event. Uh, Thursday, 1.30. On Saturday is a shred day. And this year, uh, from 9 to 1, uh, show up early because the truck gets full. But this year, there's also the opportunity to uh, bring small electronic devices as well. So I think that's an important issue. Um, I do want to comment on the actions tonight. I think most people underestimate the, what happened here tonight. This is a, a, a huge event taking place between the Council and the Board of Education to come to an agreement when they hadn't reached an agreement before on anything. And it, it, was, it took a great deal of courage, took a great deal of time. And um, I think bo all, both sides eventually come to their senses. And that's what we were hired to do, to make this situation work in this town, not just a posture about, oh, I want this, I want that. And I think it's important for us to enjoy what was just accomplished here. Yes, there'll be some work re required to make sure that it's it carried out. But last week was way up in the air. And yes, there were people who were willing to give the board whatever they wanted without any, without any uh, restrictions, without any attempt to try and resolve anything that's been existent. So uh, I, I really want us to all stop for a moment and just examine what we just did, which I think from other 
members of council from previous area errors i think they would acknowledge it as well it hasn't been done before so thank you very much and uh, my comments deputy mayor Oh, yeah. a councillor Marshall Neely. Oh, I was going to ask to go last, but okay. First, I I want to say a well overdue thank you to Howard Friedman for all of the work that you've done working with us. I appreciate it. Just want you to know that. Um, second, I didn't give enough um, enough support or credence to Sheree because Sheree McDowell who received the award tonight. I don't I don't I don't know if you know how serious it is when you have a vehicle that's running on three three tires and uh, when you go to open the door the car doesn't start and you have to raise the hood, disconnect the battery <laughs> Let it, let it go dead before you can reconnect and then drive all the way to Cromwell to get bread for our community. So I, I, I just wanted to say that and, 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 and show the community how much she loves Bloomfield and how much she contributes to Bloomfield. Also, I, I took a look at the Messenger newspaper with regard to um, the town manager candidates duke it out. And I just wanted to let the residents who were not privy to the, the, um, the meet and greet that took place last week, that there was no duking it out. They didn't duke anything out. What they did was one candidate had an opportunity to talk about himself and introduce himself to the town, and then the other person the other candidate was able to talk about himself and introduce himself to the town, and then the town was able to talk to each of the candidates. And it was, it was very cordial, it was a, a good experience for the town, it was a good experience for the two candidates. And so I, I just wanted to say that I kind of have a little bit of an issue with, with this because there was no duking it out. It was, it was really good, a really good experience. And There, there is a, a statement that I, I say quite frequently, when, especially when I used to discuss things with students when I worked in education, and that's to suppress free speech is a double wrong. It violates the rights of the hearer as well as the rights of the listener. And I, I say that and I stand behind that and I, I look at our democracy and how we, uh, we all want the ability to speak. We, we want someone to hear what we have to say. We don't want to be walked out of a meeting or, or stifled because we have something to say that doesn't agree with what someone else is saying. With an obdurate personality and an intense dislike for opposing views on topics which could impact the entire town, there, there has been extensive measures to prevent others from the council from inclusivity. We talk about transparency, but we need to talk about inclusivity. And when I say that, I am not agreeing that folks uh, don't want to hear what's going on, but we want to be included in the process. There was no one on this council that I am aware of, excuse me, that I am aware of who wanted to write a blank check. I want to be clear with that. And because I was pushing to be part of the process as your councilwoman here in Bloomfield, I too wanted to be part of this process and I did my due diligence. Maybe it wasn't to the extent of some others, but I met with folks, I talked to folks, I wrote down numbers, I did the same thing. So I know that there are other counselors who were doing the same thing and when you segregate the conversation to silos, then 
everyone is not getting all of the details with regard to what one group is doing. And there, in there lies a problem. And so I would say to the town of Bloomfield, a place that I've lived for 30 years and love dearly, that we are not writing a blank, we did not intend on writing a blank check. I don't know where that came from. This is not what, the, what we were doing. We were trying to do what was right for everyone in the town of Bloomfield because we represent the entire town of Bloomfield. And lastly, there is some budget uh, meetings going on tomorrow. I have surgery tomorrow, so I don't think I will be able to be here, but I just wanted to share that with you that I'm not being absent. I am I'm actually going to be calling in to see what's going on, and if I can speak, I will. And with that, thank you. I guess I'm the only one that really wanted to write a blank check. <laughs> um, let me explain. Any money by state law, by state law, that's given to the Board of Ed is a blank check. They have complete control of what they do with it. So our budget of 45 million, say, that we're going to give them in a few weeks, they can do whatever they want by state law. We have no say over it. Once we give it to them, it's theirs. And they are a totally independent unit. They have elected people, and they have the choice of spending it for, to probably to get the best from the dollar uh, of, uh, of that 45 million. So we're not talking about just a few pennies. We're talking about a large amount. But they're elected. They're independent body. We don't control them. And uh, all we are is acting as a finance board to give them the money. And uh, that's what this has all been about. I don't know if anybody knows, but we've been trying, uh, five of us on the council have been trying for the last several weeks to get onto the agenda to give them an additional 1.3 million, which we had over and above our, our requirements in the in our undesignated reserves, our rainy day fund. We had too much money in our rainy day fund. And to taking it out, I'm sorry, Ma'am Mayor. I'm sorry, it was just a response from the audience, I'm sorry. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. I, it, it, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's difficult to tell you that any money given to the board is a blank check because of state law. And this has been going on, I've been doing this for some, I don't know, 30 something years. And uh, when we, we tried very hard to put this on the agenda uh, two weeks ago and every block, could know it was, it was made, so we couldn't put it on the agenda. And then I went through the process very carefully and by, had the town attorney look at it and draft the wording and it went through in plenty of time and put it through. And my understanding that I've always heard was that the councilman had a right to put something on the agenda. It's always been a practice I've known for as long as I've been on the council, which goes back to the mid 70s now. You can have people disagree with that, but that's what I saw. It looks like the language, I have saw nothing in the language of our rules and procedures to amend that. But anyway, um, so this was taken off after noon. Now the final budget has to go out at noon on Friday, last Friday, and the final agenda, and it did um, before noon. And then it was pulled back in. Uh, there was a, a real effort to pull it back in and take this off, and it was demanded that it be removed. And it was, even though it shouldn't have been afternoon, and even though we had the right to put it in. So, I mean, this is such a powerful idea that it, they didn't want it to be in public. It's told that we wanted to give the board a $1.3 million, which we had to give, and they badly needed it. Now, I've seen what happens when we squeeze the board for money, and I think that's going to happen now. They usually end up laying off teachers, which is a really poor thing. We really want them to hire preachers. So I, 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 I think, I hope this agreement, which they have signed, um, is, does something to make peace. Uh, they think they can live with their 3%. three percent. They asked for 11 and a half, and, and they're going to have to figure out how to live with three. And uh, I hope that uh, they don't have to do drastic action. But if they do, you know who's going to be blamed? We are.
and, and rightly so, because we have squeezed them too much. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and just please excuse me for my voice. I think I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, yelling and screaming in the last, um, the last few days, and I lost my voice. But I just want to address a few things that I've heard um, here today, tonight. I think the one thing we have to look at, the council, the council represent the residents of this town. We have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we're the over, 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 uh, oversight body of this town. And what does that mean? Instead of writing blank checks, we have to do our homework. I don't think anyone said running for office was easy. Oh, by the way, let me just rephrase that. Running for office is easy. Doing the work is hard. Okay? And for some of my colleagues to sit up here, the Democrat caucus every Sunday before a council meeting. Every Sunday. And some of the same folks who are yelling and screaming now do not show up to those meetings. As a matter of fact, we're going to make it for public for everyone. A lot of those same members don't show up to committee meetings. I've been trying to restrain myself on this council from going back and forth with different individuals, but we have to be honest about what's going on here. We're not trying to, to hurt the schools. I have two children of my own, a son who's in the sixth grade and a daughter who's in the, the third grade in the Bloomfield school system. So the schools are important to me as well as my colleagues on this council. But what I'm not going to sit by and do is just to look at numbers that have been done in the past and just sign off on it. We have a responsibility to go through the numbers, understand what's going on. I agree, we don't have any oversight over the school board and tell them how to spend their money. And I don't think anyone of my colleagues on this council here has ever said that we want to tell the school board what to do. But you better believe we have a responsibility to, to look at their numbers and question the 11% the that they're requesting, that's our job. We may be doing this for free, but you better believe I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. So we had a right to do that. So for anyone here to question what we did, we weren't given the school a pass, the school board a pass, just to go ahead and do whatever they want to do. And guess what? The school board was in dire trouble because I believe they were irresponsible in how they were managing their budget. And they admit that. Okay? So this council wasn't this council for the first time was doing the job that the residents of this town elected us to do. So for my colleague to sit here and say he was he was willing to write a 1.3 million to the school board without having an understanding exactly of what's going on with their finances, that was irresponsible. And he basically tried to undermine the process. And the process was to sit down with the leaders from the school board and the leaders from the town council to come up with an agreement to move forward. I've attended some CCM conference with a lot of elected officials across this great state of ours. And guess what? Everyone is talking about the same things that we did. How can we consolidate departments, non-educational departments? People, that makes sense. Do you see what's going on with the state right now? Guess what? That's because for years and years, everyone was just basically spending taxpayers' dollars without questioning what's going on. And this council is not going to do it. We have a job to do. You elected us to do that. And when it comes to election, the voters of this town is going to have to decide who they want to, to, to be the, who their officials. And that's their responsibility. But as long as I'm on this council with my colleagues who have worked hard, spend time away from their families to make sure that we go through a process here that works for everyone. Now, think about this for seven, an 11% increase. The same uh, kids that were, were claiming that were helping just throw money out there, it's the same kids that were gonna be hurting because you better believe a lot of these families cannot afford to pay an additional three or $600 of taxes. Everyone is hurting. So I think it's important for us to go through this process and do the right thing. And the schools are not going to hurt. I wouldn't sit up here and did something to hurt the schools. What's going to happen? The school and the school boards are going to have to think seriously how they manage their finances, just like every one of you who are watching or here today have to do every single day at home. 
manage your finances. So I disagree with anyone who's just going to say, we can't tell them what to do. Of course we can't tell them what to do. But we have to do our homework. We cannot sit by here and just be passive of what was going on 20 or 40 years ago. Those days are long gone. Times have changed. Elected officials have to do the job they're elected to do and not worry about an election and playing games. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go one more step. How could you have a chair of both parties, okay, of both parties on the school board? That should never happen. You cannot have a Republican chairman of the Republican Party and a Democratic chairman of the Democratic Party sitting on the school board and making decisions. Talk about a conflict of interest. And we want to sit here and talk about posturing and we're not trying to do the right thing. We need to be honest with ourselves, people, because we're going to be in the same mess that they sit in. I'm happy to say that Bloomfield is in a positive position right now, double A plus. People are talking about the reserves. Reserves are there for a rainy day. Not so we can just cavalierly just throw it at bad money. Let's start doing the right thing. Let's do what voters want us to do. The hard work, make sure that their hard-earned taxes are being put to good uses. And I thank you all for continuing supporting us and helping us through this process because this has been an experience to me. I've never been an elected official before, but I've always been dedicated to my community and I have a chance to do it. And I'm happy to have that chance. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. I think the council comments were almost as long as the meeting. <laughs> I got you to laugh. So here's the thing. Obviously you realize that as counselors we do not see eye to eye on every situation. And that's normal. But at some point in time you gotta show up, you gotta do the work, and we're committed to showing up and doing the work. It baffles me for those who don't show up, all of a sudden want to become relevant and make the process that much more difficult. For us to sit and work with the school board, we knew that it would have taken some time, but we believed that we would have come to an agreement for council or merit to continue to try to push an issue. Made absolutely no sense, right? Then you want to go ahead and try to bully to get an agenda item. We were trying to work out a compromise. When you have too many people in a room, there's too many voices. When you have a limited amount of people in the room who really want to make a difference, you will get something accomplished, and that's what we did. We worked hard, late nights, angst, because we believe in our town. One Bloomfield, don't buy into it, the lies. Don't buy into the lies that we're so divided. We're one town. We're going to make it work and we're committed to the work. I just want to address something, because I don't like to let things hang out in the air. I think everybody know from the last year and a half that I worked for the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District. I believe that um, there was a legal opinion before I got elected that I can still work for the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District because they helped me to buy milk and pay taxes. If I am doing town business, I have to use time. Vacation time, personal time, sick time, birthday time, whatever time I have to use, I use that time. I somehow have to make it up on Saturdays, right, Council? Right, Deputy Mayor? I'm committed to doing that because I'm committed to the job that I was elected to do. Whether I'm sick and or in treatment, I know you all didn't know that, I show up. I know Women's History Month is over, but I have to shout out my mother Pauline, my grandmother Ina, my aunt Sandra, my aunt Jackie, my aunt Veronica, my girlfriend Lakeisha, who have all taught me how to show up in the midst of treatment. For the last year and a half, I have showed up and I have done the work. 
I take it as a personal assassination for anyone who wants to question that and who after a year and a half want to now become relevant. I work hard for this town. I work hard for my family. I live in this town. All the residents are friends and family. All the students are my students. I don't do it just because I was elected. I didn't start serving our town when I became the mayor or a council member. I've been serving this town for years. I get the fact that we like to play politics, but I think politics are only important on election day. After we've been elected, we need to do the work of the town. That needs to be our number one priority. Not getting in our feelings and walking out when we feel like it, but sticking and staying and getting things done. Thank you to the real MVPs for staying in the audience. Chief, I appreciate you. All those who are at home watching TV, you missed all the drama. It's not the same on TV as it is here in council. We will be back here tomorrow with budget deliberations. Once again, your voice matters. Thank you very much, and good night. Uh, Madam Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a motion to address the so motion? Yeah. Any, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously.